All right, everybody. Today we are going to take a small break from uh, gaming here, and we're going to talk about some basic Excel functions. Uh, so I kind of put together this little mock table. Uh, I work primarily with call center groups, so I'm sure there's a lot of people out there, you know, also working in call centers and, you know managing that data, how you analyze it, how you condense it, different things like that. So today we're going to start very basic. Um, I'm going to try and put a couple series out there, kind of expand, share some knowledge. I figured today we start the basics with a simple VLOOKUP formula and then also how the appropriate way to calculate uh, average handle time whenever you're dealing with call center environment. <coughs> so. What we have here is a table. Um, we're gonna say it's it's days, you know, days in a month, and then calls that our agents have took within that month. Um, so what I want to figure out first initially is how many how many phone calls did so let's say each of them take, um, and then overall. So what what's the, what's the summary of the amount that they took, and then how long on average did it take for them to field those phone calls? So we have a couple of different metrics here. Um, but the first thing we wanna do is we wanna build a, our miniature table, our summary table, basically. Uh, and we're first gonna do this just by going ahead and capturing the individual's names. Uh, that's all the unique individuals uh, within our list today. Uh, we're gonna clear these buckets out because we don't need to work even worry about those right now. Um, and so a couple pieces here. You know, I started saying we're going to do a VLOOKUP, but as I'm looking at this, you know, a VLOOKUP is not going to necessarily return what I want. So if we started to go with a VLOOKUP, um, and I wanted to look up Mr. Edwards here, and then I went over to my table. Um, so we're going through the steps. Microsoft Excel is really good about outlining kind of the flow that you need to fill out. Uh, otherwise, you'd just be flying blind and you'd have to know it by hand. Uh, so the lookup value, we're looking for Mr. Edwards, and then it's the table array. This is basically, where am I looking for Mr. Edwards? And then, what am I looking for vertically in my VLOOKUP? So that's going to be your array. So the array is going to be the column. The first part of your array is the column that your, your, your criteria is in, or your lookup value. And then the array is going to span over the range that you want to look in. So if I want to look, maybe I want to look and see a hold time, right? Um, which is, you know, what, five away from Mr. Right? from our agent's names. So we'd have our table array and then it's our index number. So where's our index? What column is it in? It's one through five, basically. So then we're looking for column five. Uh, we want an approximate match. Close paren, boom, 500. So you can drag this down, uh, it points at everybody, and this is just gonna capture, you know, the first time that they appear within this. Um, so now you can see kind of how we are running into maybe a little a little issue. Uh, if we're looking to summarize all this data, we're, we're only getting the first appearance of their name. So that's where we're gonna switch it over to a sum if. Um, you can always do some ifs as well. Uh, it's kind of good practice to just do a some ifs. Um, there's really no difference if you're only using one criteria. But if you want to use multiple criteria, like say a name and then a month, uh, then you definitely want the sum ifs. So it's probably good practice to just run with some ifs all the time. So the sum, we're, we're in our calls column. So we're in a, our sum range is going to be our calls. And then our criteria range. Again, it's going to be the array that our criteria, which is going to be our agent's name again, is going to be found. Close paren. And there's how many phone calls they took over this course of this table here. Quickly run that across the rest of the peers. Kind of get your peer average. Um, and the next thing we want to do is we want to kind of roll that to the right and fill out everything else, sum everything else up. So I could type it in, you know, every time. And go through the steps but what I would like to do is just to be able to drag this across if I just drag it across now we're gonna get nothing because now it's looking for the calls 
in the calls, which doesn't make any sense. Um, but basically what Excel did is it shifted this whole formula over, which shifts your columns as well. Uh, so what you have to do is you need to come in here and you may basically make um, where you're looking and then what you're looking for. So basically your criteria, you need to kind of lock those in. So you do that by pressing F4 um, for the column. Since we're looking at the entire column, you can just hit F4 once. It puts two dollar signs around it. Uh, you can manually type those in if you want. Now for criteria, we don't want to do exact. And the reason that you don't want to do exact on that is quite simply, if we have that exact now and we drag this down, it's looking exactly at Mr. Edwards every time. So I can drag it how many times down and it's always going to be looking at Mr. Edwards. So with this one, you want to look at the exact column, but not necessarily the exact row. So we're going to make, you hit F4, you kind of cycles through the exact. <laughs> so if you see just the exact behind the four, that's always going to keep you in row four. Uh, maybe you have something where you're dragging it across columns, but you want to stay in row four every time. Uh, this one, we just want to stay in column A, and we want to be able to go down. So now, as we drag this over, you'll notice we only made one column not exact, and that's going to be our number of calls, which is going to then convert over to our talk time. So you can see the benefit of that. So now we drag that across. Boom, we just captured everybody, drag it down. Now we have everybody summarized. Beautiful. Nice, clean data easy to work with um, the only thing that we don't have is kind of the time frame of when this was done so if you're working with multiple months uh, you'd want to jump into a pivot table um, which we're going to cover here in a little bit so we have our rough summary data data so far we've run through VLOOKUPs, some ifs uh, now we're going to do a basic calculation for AHT or average handle time basically the average amount of time it's taking either the individuals in your group or who you're you know the data you're analyzing it could be anything how long it takes to do on average you know it's a time exercise so you're kind of setting your work standard if you will um, this is definitely good practice for that. So we have all of our variables that go into our work standard. Standard In this case, we're doing average handle time. So it's going to be talk time, ACW time, which is after call work. So it's like if you're, you're not ready to take your next phone call or taking notes, something along those lines, it's all captured. And then the average amount of time you spent on hold. So to produce that, we first need our numerator, uh, which is going to be the sum of our three instances that make up basically our work standard divided by the number of calls that we took. So Mr. Edwards average handle time is 330 seconds. I believe I use the same formula to down on all these so everybody got 300 times 20 so it's not really glamorous um, but at the end of the day you just really took this, the summary of this, which is, you know, 104,610 seconds and divided it by 311 phone calls, which gives you an average of 330 seconds per phone call. And if you wanted to convert that over to minutes, you know, all you can do is simple math, right? Dividing it by 60 seconds, give you five minutes per phone call. Not bad. Pretty simple. Quick way to analyze data, though. So quick and easy. All right. So again, we walk through the sum ifs, uh, making your cells exact. You know, kind of farming data from a, t a data set to kind of clean it up to makes it a little bit easier to work with. Um, in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can do basically the same thing, except we're going to make it with a pivot table. So if you want to, you know, explore working with pivot table a little bit, we're going to use the same data set. We're going to form the data. We're going to summarize it um, much faster. And then we're also going to categorize it by month, which makes it incredibly more valuable because if you're working with trending data month over month, um, 
being able to break it out as same time last month comparison or tracking month over month, year to date, month to date, etc. Uh, pivot table is real powerful for that. We're also going to enter a, um, <coughs> what is it? I can't remember the name of it. Basically, it's going to be a, a, a unique function within the pivot table that's going to do our AHT for us so that way you don't have to type it out. Uh, you don't have to try and marry data up next to a pivot table. We're all going to have the pivot table do all that for us. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Quick and easy, basic VLOOKUP, some ifs, exact locations. Um, if you have any questions, leave comments. If you want to see any kind of, you know, if you're having trouble with any Excel formula and you want to put it out there, let me know. Um, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed it. Throw me a like, throw me a subscribe, um, and I'll see you next time.